You're going to elect me as your Secretary of State because I oversee the election system. We're going to make sure that you have a fair and transparent election system, because if we do, we are a red state, I guarantee you. Republican right there, Jim Marchant has a habit of denying the results of the 2020 election, called lying about it. And he is just one of the many reality-denying candidates that are collecting big, big money from big business and their leaders. Two reporters who have been on top of all of this really important stuff join us now. CNBC political finance reporter Brian Schwartz and Judd Legum, founder and author of the political newsletter Popular Information. All right, gentlemen, let's get dark. Brian, to you first. Tell us about your reporting. This well, is really important stuff. Yeah, it is. I mean, right now what you're seeing is dozens of corporate leaders across the country getting behind election deniers or at the very least people who dispute, you know, the results of the 2020 election. And you're seeing it at the state level, as you mentioned there, the secretary of state uh, candidate. And really at the federal level as well, millions of dollars being put into this election. And again, it's not just the leaders of these of these companies, but also corporate America, the, the companies themselves. In some but cases, didn't many of these companies put out statements after January 6? We are not going to give any money to any lawmakers that did not vote to certify the election. I mean, what happened to that? They well, just put them in a timeout. Well, you know, it, it, at the time I, when that when those statements were being made, my first thought was that that's a lot of PR spin. That was my guess at the time, and it appears that's exactly what it was. And at the very least, it was not a long-term commitment. I, I hate to put it like that, but I think that's fair to say right now. If you look at the numbers that Judd's looked at, the numbers I've been looking at for quite some time, there has been some, let's put it lightly, inconsistencies there, particularly from corporate PACs, the Amazons of the world, and you name it, who have been giving to groups that have helped you know, election denying candidates um, for for some time, and it's again, including at the federal level. So this is what's been going on at least since January six. And again, these companies said they were going to pull back. Maybe they did, but at some point they resumed, and here we are today with where the midterms are. The Amazon super PAC. Last I checked, Jeff uh, Bezos cares all about the environment, and I'm pretty sure election deniers don't care about climate or the environment. Judd, tell us what you've learned, and actually name some names. Sure, I'd be happy to. You know, this is something that we've really been tracking on a monthly basis since January 2021, when all these companies made the statements. Um, and there have been some companies uh, that have kept uh, their pledges, uh, Airbnb, Marriott, um, uh, several dozen companies, but a larger group of companies have, over the course of the last two years, really rolled back these pledges. The last one uh, that was particularly significant uh, was Amazon, uh, which last month uh, gave over $17,000 to nine candidates uh, who voted to overturn the election. The amount of money is not significant for a company like Amazon, but what I do think is important is these are people that Amazon said in their own statement in January 2021 uh, were engaged in an unacceptable effort to undermine the democratic process. Nothing has changed since then as far as the views of the people they donated to. They haven't recanted that vote. They haven't expressed any um, regret about what they've done. But before Election Day, Amazon's reversed their stance and they're now donating money. And we've seen lots of different companies, AT&T, uh, is a is another uh, example uh, who initially pledged to cut off funds and have now given uh, to many many candidates. Toyota is another one. We could we could spend your whole program, Stephanie, if, uh, list, listing off names, but I'm trying to give people a flavor of what's been going on. Nine billion dollars. That's how much money has been spent in these midterm elections, right? That is more than the annual Chicago school budget for the year. Given how much lawmakers on both sides of the aisle need to raise in order to win these elections, is there any reason we should believe there's going to be any 
campaign finance regulation changes, election funding. They want these big dollars. Yeah, you're right. And it's on both sides of the aisle. And, and there is very unlikely in the next Congress, as we get into this next Congress, that we're going to see any really changes on campaign finance reform. There have been attempts at this over the years, and there really has not been any real big movement there. I do want to take a one step back at something that we've been talking about here. You look at what happened after the election. There's one major example that comes to my mind of a, of a billionaire donor named Steve Schwarzman, the CEO of Blackstone. Uh, after the election, he... One of the first people to be next to Donald Trump on the Saudi Arabia trip. They, they started an infrastructure yeah. fund with Saudi Arabian money right after that. Yes. Yeah, so he, he came out after the election and said, listen, it's over. Joe Biden is president. Donald Trump is not. And Steve Schwarzman, as you just alluded to, was very close to Donald Trump. Fast forward till now, he is now giving millions of dollars to super PACs, and some of those super PACs are supporting uh, people who have disputed uh, the election results, including Adam Laxalt, who's running right now for Senate in Nevada. So that's where we... Have you called Blackstone? Well, I've, I've tried to re reach Blackstone before to speak to Mr. Schwarzman about this larger topic, and I don't think we've really gotten a full response. But that's the other key to this as well. When you look at the billionaire donors, and you really speak to people in and around their world, one of the things they just do not talk about at the top of their list of why they're supporting these groups is what happened with, with, in the 2020 election and the, these people's reactions to it. It's not even at the top of the list, really. So it's very fascinating to see the lack of discussion about this from the donor class, the big donor class, and what they're focusing on now, which is the usual, you know, cutting taxes and things like that. But it's not really a focal point when they're giving big money here. Maybe it should be, but it is not talked about at a really high level. Judd, what are they getting from these lawmakers? Is, is the bet, I'm just going to get easier regulation and more tax cuts? I mean, those are really positive if you run a company. But if you don't have a functioning democracy, if we're living in an, uh, in, in an autocracy, suddenly all the rules fly out the window. And last I checked, Steve Schwartzman's the best example. The reason Blackstone, he told me this himself, the reason Blackstone doesn't do business in Russia is because he can't trust the rule of law. But they're willing to back candidates that want to put the rule of law out the window. Why would that be, Judd? Well, I mean, that's exactly what corporate America was saying uh, less than two years ago. Uh, they were saying that this represents such a fundamental threat and the transition of power, the peaceful transfer of power is so fu fundamental that they took this extraordinary step and said, we're not going to give to lawmakers who took this vote on January 6th. And really, that's a principle that should apply up and down the ballot and to these important state positions. And not only do you have the corporations returning uh, and donating to these congressional candidates, but you also have, especially in the governor's races, candidates that are extraordinarily vocal in their belief, the, the false belief or the false uh, contention that Trump won the 2020 election. Carrie Lake in Arizona, uh, really centered her entire campaign around promoting this lie. And then now she's being supported with $11 million plus from the Republican Governors Association. And that is an organization that doesn't just take small checks of $1,000 or a couple of thousand dollars, but you have six-figure donations from companies like Google, uh, United Healthcare, uh, Chevron, many others writing these large checks and it's going straight to campaigns like Carrie Lake. And she may very well be the next uh, governor of Arizona. It's a close race there, but certainly the $11 million from the Republican Governors Association, much of which was funded by corporate America, has, has not hurt her chances there.